This meeting is being recorded. Wow. Welcome. I got a shock. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you heard that, but I heard that. Holy cow. Welcome. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it recorded the look on my face. It must have been priceless. I had no idea that that was going to happen. Wow. Happy Monday to you. Um, perfect. <laughs> Oh my goodness, how perfect that is. Uh. <laughs> oh man. Hmm. So let's um, <laughs> let's get started. <laughs> hmm. What a what a um, what a what an interesting experience this life is, huh? Hmm. So, um, so let's start by choosing a posture. It, it is weekday somatics after all, we've got to at least have the pretense that <laughs> that it's weekday somatics. Let's, um, so we're choosing a posture. And how do you know when you've chosen a posture? Hopefully you've done it by now. So the, the, you know, it's a bit of a, I'll let you in and I'll, a little bit of a secret. The, the secret part, it's, it's only half, half the secret. The other half of the secret, I can't tell you, but this half of the secret is that choosing a posture is a way of noticing. It's a way of switching off of autopilot. So if you if you don't know the answer to how you know have you chosen the posture yet or how do you know if you've chosen the posture, you're doing it correctly. Because those questions are also to switch off the autopilot. how quickly the autopilot comes back on. Ah, I've chosen, I've chosen the posture now. I can go on to autopilot. So we choose a posture. So now we're aware. Now, if it's comfortable for you, then let's close the eyes.
and be aware of the boundary of your body. So probably that would be the skin. So be aware of the skin of your skin, the skin of your body. And you can notice that the skin of your body, there's skin at the scalp and you have skin on the ears. The ears are awfully complicated, aren't they? You notice there's skin all around them, a lot of surface area on the ears. So you can be aware of all of the folds and the contours of your ears. See if you can do that just by noticing. So there's the top of the ear and then the ear lobe. There's the backside of the ear and there's the inside of the ear. All different parts of the ear and all those different folds and contours. There's skin on your forehead and skin on the back of your head. What about your eyelids, the skin of your eyelids? The eyelids are fairly complex. There's a upper eyelid and a lower eyelid. And then there's the corners where the eyelids come together. And then there's your nose. So be aware of your nose. The nose has a bridge. So you can be aware of that starting at the space between the eyebrows. And then as you go down the nose, it starts to flare out. And then at the base of the nose, there are these two openings, the nostrils. And if you think about it, you know, the skin actually also is on the inside of the nostrils. So you have skin inside your nostrils. So become aware of that. Be aware of the skin on the inside of the left nostril and the skin on the inside of the right nostril. And then be aware of the sides of the nose where there's a bit of a crease that forms there where the nose and the rest of the face come together. And of course, those creases are covered with skin. And then there's what we call the upper lip which is covered with skin, but then the, the actual lip itself, is that skin? Well, that's a little bit complicated. That's a little different. That's this sort of gray area between the inside and the outside. So if you think about the inside of your mouth, well, that's not really skin, that's different. That's uh, made of a more of a, a keratin, more like your hair actually. So it's different. And the lips are, the, the lips form this gray zone blending between the skin and not skin. And your cheeks are covered in skin. And the chin is covered in skin. and the throat on the outside at least is covered in skin. It's amazing how much skin there is just, you know, we haven't even finished all of the head yet. A lot of skin.
got a skin on the back of the neck. And then all that skin between the head and the throat and the neck, it all blends together with the skin of the chest and the shoulders and the upper back. So you can start to be aware of that. It's a lot of skin. And then you can be aware of the armpits. So you've got skin there in the armpits. So skin wrapping all the way around the, from the shoulders to the armpits, all around the upper arms, all around the lower arms. So skin all the way from the shoulders and the armpits all the way wrapping around the arms all the way down to the hands and the fingers. So skin continuously. And then you can be aware of what we could call the flanks, the sides of the torso, the if your arms are at your sides, then it's what this the space your arms are covering on the sides of the torso. So your side ribs are there, but of course, on top of the ribs is skin. So you've got all the skin extending from the armpits all the way down the sides of the torso. Now, an interesting thing about the skin is that most of us think about the skin as, as I said, it's our, the boundary of our body. Now, if you want, you're welcome to also be aware of the rest of the skin. We won't go through all of that part by part, but you could be aware of the skin all around the abdomen and the lower back and the pelvic floor and the thighs wrapping all around the thighs and the knees and the lower legs and all the feet. So you start to be aware of the skin all around your entire body, the whole body wrapped in skin. And most of us are accustomed to considering the skin to be the boundary of our body. So what does that mean? The, if you, if you consider this for a moment, this is a boundary. So what is a boundary? It's what distinguishes between two things. So you've got what's inside the skin, which would be what? Me. And what's outside the skin, which is what? not me. So inside the skin is what we consider to be me and outside the skin is what we consider to be not me. So have that awareness now, have awareness of the skin and that there's the in, what's inside the skin. So be aware of what's inside the skin. And be aware of what's outside the skin.
and then be aware to the best of your ability of the skin itself so that you can be aware of that which distinguishes between what's inside and what's outside, what's me and what's not me. Now the skin is uh, an interesting interesting layer because it's distinguishing between what's inside and what's outside. And it does a pretty good job of that, at least for most of us. But it's, we could say selectively permeable. So it allows some things in and some things out. For example, it, it allows sweat out. It allows light in. So we could say there's an intelligence to the skin. So be aware again of what's inside. Be aware of what's outside and then be aware of the skin itself and be aware of the skin all around the body. So the front side and the back side and the left side and the right side and the top and the bottom and all around. You could even just have a sense of something just sort of circling around, wrapping around over and over and over. So you have this awareness of the entirety of that container of the skin. Again, including the front side and the back side. So be aware of the back side. Be aware of the front side and be aware of the left side and be aware of the right side and be aware of the top and be aware of the bottom be aware of the entirety of the skin all around and then be aware of what's inside and be aware of what's outside and then again be aware of the skin itself and see if you can really get clear on the skin itself so as a as a direct experience not as a conceptual exercise but just to have a direct sense of the skin itself see if you can be aware of the skin as being alive and also start to notice the intelligence of the skin so it's alive and intelligent So the skin, which is what is the container for me and what holds me. So what's me is inside and what's not me is outside. The skin itself is intelligent and alive, which means that it's responsive.
So start to be aware of the skin as alive and intelligent and responsive and notice that this alive responsive skin is able to perfectly maintain this healthy boundary between what is me and what is not me. Now become aware of your breathing. And normally for most of us, when we become aware of the breathing, we start to be aware of the breath moving in and out through the nostrils and maybe the lungs expanding and contracting or the chest or abdomen moving. But let's see if we can be aware of the breath in a different way. So. Of course, you're welcome to continue to breathe through the nose. That's fine. But see if you can also be aware of the breath and the skin. So it's as if the breath is moving through the skin. So have this awareness of the skin and have this awareness of the inside and have this awareness of the outside and then have awareness of the breath and that breath, at least a subtle dimension of the breath traveling through the skin. So in and out through the skin. And again, be aware of the skin as alive and intelligent and responsive so that the skin is able to act as a, a membrane, a filter that's intelligent so that it allows in those aspects of the breath, which are most nourishing, most healing, most rejuvenating, most enlivening, most cleansing. And it allows out all that is no longer needed. So you can start to have this sense of how the skin mediates the relationship between the inside and the outside through the breath. So that with each breath, the inside becomes more luminous. More at ease. More harmonious.
Now let's play around. It's just play. It's not, it doesn't need to be taken too seriously. But just for fun, let's, let's experiment and let's see what happens if we allow the, the skin, or let's say we can invite a play with the skin where we suggest to the skin, hey, let's try bringing the breath in and out through certain parts of the skin. So let's start by being aware if possible. If not, then just continue with breathing through the skin more generally. But if possible, can you be aware of the soles of the feet? And ask the skin to let the breath travel in and out through the soles of the feet. And if you're able to allow the breath to travel in and out through the soles of the feet, then just notice what that is like. And if you just allow the natural intelligence of the skin and your inner body to direct that breath, then what do you experience? Without an expectation of what it should be, you just find out what it is. And then let's see what happens if we invite the breath to move in and out through the pelvic floor. So bring your attention to the pelvic floor. And ask the skin to allow the breath to move in and out through the pelvic floor and see what that experience is like. And what about the belly button? So let's invite the skin to allow the breath to move in and out through the belly button.
Now you might be able to get a sense of a point on the back behind where the belly button is. So the corresponding area on the back to the, the point on the front where the belly button is, you could imagine or get a sense of that point and imagine or invite the skin to allow the breath to move in and out through that point on the back. Now we can invite the skin to allow the breath to move in and out through the front of the chest. Without trying to coerce the experience, just notice without any imposed ideas of what it should be, what is the experience? Allowing the breath to move in and out through the chest. Next, you can explore the point on the back that corresponds to the point on the front of the chest that you were just breathing through. So allowing the breath to travel in and out through the skin of the back on that point. What about the palms of the hands? So invite the skin to allow the breath to move in and out through the palms of the hands.
and next you can invite the breath to travel in and out through the skin at the base of the throat. Now, again, be aware of the skin covering the whole body, front and back, left and right, top and bottom, all around. And now invite the skin again to allow the breath to move in and out through the skin equally all around all of the skin. Remembering that the skin is alive and intelligent and responsive and that with each inhalation The inner body is being nourished with the light and energy. That is most supportive and enriching. And each exhalation releases anything that's no longer needed. So that each breath makes the body more luminous. Start to have a sense of that inner light
And again, become aware of the skin. And be aware of what's inside. And be aware of what's outside. And be aware that this inner light illuminates all of your experience. And so even your so-called outer becomes lighter by virtue of this inner light. So you can start to recognize that all of your so-called outer is actually a reflection of the inner. And as the inner is illuminated, you can recognize a growing clarity and confidence in your ability to meet all that is supposedly out there because you can recognize that the actual meeting is taking place here that your inner experience is the true experience So it is really, truly this inner light that blesses everything because all that is what we call out there is actually seen and met and experienced here in this inner light. So in this awareness of this inner light, let's consciously bless and extend blessings to all starting with our inner body and our experiences that we can more clearly recognize as our inner experiences. So bless your organs, your bones and marrow and your circulatory system and lymphatic system and all of the connective tissue and bless your thoughts and your emotions and your sensations and your memories and bless your inner relationships with all those so-called outer beings. And then continue to extend these blessings to your home and any animals or plants you may care for. 
to the elementals, the fire, the air, the water, the minerals. And bless your family and loved ones. And bless your friends and acquaintances. And bless all those you have challenges with, even your enemies. Bless this earth and all of her inhabitants and bless this entire creation and all beings everywhere. See that it's all within you. So really it's a willingness to extend blessings to all of yourself. It's a willingness to forgive all of yourself and to accept all of yourself and to welcome all of yourself. And again, become aware of the skin, the covering of your physical body. Be aware of the top of the head and the left ear and the right ear and the nose and the eyes and the lips and the tongue and the throat and the neck. Be aware of the shoulders and the arms and the hands and fingers. Be aware of the chest and the upper back and the abdomen and the lower back and be aware of the buttocks and the thighs and the knees and the lower legs and be aware of the tops of the feet and the toes and the ankles and the heels and the soles of the feet. And be aware of your entire body inside and outside from head to toe, front and back, left and right. Be aware of your face and your forehead and soften the face and forehead so that in a moment when we open the eyes, you can do so smoothly and comfortably. So let the forehead be soft. Softer still. And when you're ready, slowly begin to open the eyes and do so slowly so that it can be a smooth transition.
So today I have an announcement, which is that there we won't have a Q and A Q&A today because I have another meeting scheduled for noon, which is in three minutes. So it'd be a very short Q and A if we did it. Um, But for those who were maybe anticipating having a Q&A, I would, my suggestion is uh, take it easy. If, you, if you're able to do so, just relax. See if you can relax without any distraction. If not, then that's fine too. But could be really nice to allow this to integrate further. This was a really uh, pretty pretty deep exploration today, and that's true whether you think so or not. Um, and so. It'll be helpful if you just allow that to integrate. Try not to try, you know, try not to do a lot or push yourself if, if possible. That would be really nice, be helpful. And uh, if you're able to do that, then I think you'll find that it should be really lovely and a really smooth integration. And if you're not able to do that, then don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. This is this is very deep exploration, but also very gentle and balanced. So it should be fine. But as usual, remember that whatever happens, whatever comes up in your life over the course of the next day or two or three or four or five, it's part of the healing process for good. All this stuff that we've kept in the dark when we raise the level of the light, you know, there's more illumination. It means we see more. It's not like more light and now it's all easy peasy it's like oh oh <laughs> now, now i'm seeing more so be gentle be patient be loving with yourself forgive yourself accept yourself you'll notice it's just inevitable you'll notice more things about yourself you'll notice the, the stuff that you didn't want to see about yourself and if you don't see it in yourself you'll see it in somebody else because somebody else will be perfectly happy to show it to you. So if you don't want to see your own anger, somebody else will show it to you. But as we saw, hopefully you saw in this exploration today, where is that experience? It's in you. So if we, if, if somebody else is showing us something, and this isn't to say we need to accept other people's abusive or hurtful behavior toward us, Certainly, we have the right and responsibility to care for ourselves and, and, and so forth. But, but once we've established some healthy boundary for ourselves and safety for ourselves, we can also then, rather than just saying, oh, that's out there, we can take a look and see, well, who ha who's having this experience? I am. So where is the, rec the, the recognition of this? is in me. Well, in order to have that recognition, there is something in me that is being reflected out there that I'm recognizing. So rather than focusing on that out there, look to see what is this in here and not to fix it or judge it or condemn it or any of that, but just to see it because in the witnessing of it is where the healing takes place. It's not in the judgment or the condemnation. It's in the witnessing. It's in the receiving, the acceptance. That's what real self-acceptance is. It's not the judgment. It's not saying, oh, I'm such a bad person. Oh, look how angry I am. Look how evil I am. 
woe is me. It's to see, oh, oh, I was rejecting that. Oh, I had judgment of that. Oh, I pushed that away. To finally receive it and receive its innocence. You know, if you imagine that this is, you see yourself like a like an innocent baby, a newborn baby, then of course these impulses arise because it's human nature to experience the anger, the frustration, the fear, so forth. So, but see it, see yourself like you would see a newborn baby and then you don't have to be so terrified of these experiences. They're just happening within you. You can witness them and then you're free. So don't dismay when these experiences arise. Instead, it's a celebration, finally. Finally, I'm, I'm actually witness. Finally, I'm integrating. Finally, I'm receiving. Finally, I'm not rejecting. What a blessing. And no, like I said, it's part of the healing process. All is for good. You are safe. You are held. You are protected. You are guided by unseen forces. And uh, with that, I'm going to end the recording. Thank you so much for being with me today, and I'll see you next time. Blessings to you all. Bye for now.